much, and I would call on Mr. Massey. Can we be honest with the American people about what's going on here? This is political theater. I'm going to call out both sides right here. It's all posturing. It's fake fighting. We all know where it ends up. This is Groundhog Day. I don't care if the Democrat is the speaker or Republican is the speaker. We always get a CR in September, and then we get an omnibus. Sometimes there's a twist on that. We might get the omnibus before Christmas, but if we're not good, it comes after Christmas. But that's what's going to happen. And in the meantime, it's political theater. You know, we've got some, it's good theater. We've got great writers. I wish they'd just come up with a new plot. It's the same plot every fiscal year. Uh, what should we be doing? It's already been discussed. We should have done 12 separate bills. We should have done 12 separate bills. But again, whether Democrats are in control or Republicans are in control, we never do the 12 separate bills. What did, what, why do we always spend at least as much as we did last year, and why do we never cut spending? It's because Democrats want to grow the welfare state, and Republicans want to grow the military-industrial complex. And we're, we're eventually going to get together, and they're both going to go up. I guarantee it. And both parties are just fine letting the bureaucrats do their thing, which should be our thing, according to Article I, uh, Section 8 in the Constitution. We are empowered with these things. Most important of the things we do is the funding, and that's the big lever we have. You know, I've sat through now almost two years of hearings in this Congress where we've exposed lies at the CDC, shortcuts at the FDA, unconstitutional gun bans at the ATF, over prosecution of January 6ers at the DOJ, targeting common citizens at the FBI, spying by the NSA, illegal mandates for livestock by the USDA, targeting plant or transgenic plant vaccine at the NSF, and censorship, the censorship industrial complex at the of which the NSF is part of, automobile kill switch at the DOT. Now, these are all things, I think, most Democrats are just fine with this kind of totalitarian state that the bureaucrats are pushing on us. But Republicans at least pretend to be against these things. But what are we going to do this September? We're going to fund every freaking one of those things that we have exposed. That is the tool that we have is the funding. Why are we funding things we don't like? We don't have to. Well, it's because we're addicted to spending. And this doesn't do anything about the addiction at all. So um, why, let, me, let me touch on one point, too, here that I think is important. Is, you know, a couple years ago, or a summer and a half ago, I suppose now, we did something where we um, allowed the debt limit to be increased. But as, uh, as a condition of that, we said, if you do a CR that lasts past April 30th, everything's going to get cut 1%. And that, to me, seemed like at least a little tinge of fiscal responsibility was creeping in. But now I notice that this CR, instead of going one year and giving us time to do the 12 appropriations bills, is going to go six months. Now let me tell you what's going to happen because this goes six months. Number one, it ends in March 28th, on March 28th. Well, the automatic cuts happen on April 30th if the CR went past that. So that is exactly why the speaker chose a six-month CR, is so we don't have even the chance, a threat to this, to this town, it's a threat, of a 1% cut. We don't want to even, this is like T-ball. The 1% cut is on the T, and Republicans won't even swing at it. So instead, we're going to do a six-month CR instead of a one-year CR. That sets up this another crisis next spring where we can do another pretend fight sometime around March. And that fight, will it'll be the same fight regardless of who wins the presidency and who's in charge of the Senate and the House. And we're basically going to get pretty much the same result. But that's six months from now. In the meantime, we can kick the can down the road. All of these things that we've exposed and all of these hearings are going to continue to get funded but wait, there's a bright, shiny object on this CR. I've never seen one of these. I have never seen a bright, shiny object attached to one of these must-pass bills. Oh, wait, no. It actually happens. There always is a bright, shiny object, a bobble, if you will. 
a little something to get excited about. This save act, it's gonna save us all, right? Uh, and, and by the way, this is good political theater. I do like this part of it, that we're gonna see almost every Democrat cast a vote so that illegals can vote in our elections. I mean, that's pretty clever on the part of our speaker to set that up, make you all take that vote. But here's what he's gonna do after you take that vote. He's gonna take it off. The bright, shiny object goes away. It's Lucy and the football again. And the American public is all revved up. Yeah, we're gonna to get to save that. We're gonna save these elections. We're gonna stop the illegals from voting. Really, how are you gonna do that in like six weeks? I think they're already registered if they're gonna vote. Some of them probably already voted. This SAVE Act ain't gonna save anything. And particularly because it ain't ever gonna become law. It's a, it's a false promise to get all the Republicans half pregnant. And then you're gonna get fully pregnant by the end of September when you vote for this CR. That is not gonna have this, I mean, I mean, I hate to break this to you. I mean, the Democrats already know this. I'm not telling you anything special. I hate to break it to the Republicans. You ain't getting the SAVE Act. It is not gonna stay on this bill. Why? Because we're gonna cave. We're gonna cave. Is it a fight worth having? Absolutely it's a fight worth having. Make those Democrats say they want illegals to vote. Make them take that vote as many times as you can. And then make them go to the ballot box in November. But that's what it is, it's political theater, folks. We all know where it ends up. We've seen it, I've been here 12 years, I've seen it 12 times. I refuse to be a thespian in this failure theater. And with that, I yield back.